Hey guys, how about a little spontaneous unboxing video? I'm still in the process of reorganizing the basement and switching between that and trying to finish off some outstanding projects. But there will be some really good video series coming up. Part of which I think is contained in these boxes. But what really sparked me uh, to make this video is this box. This appeared on my doorstep. Um, couple days ago. It wasn't mailed to me. It was physically dropped off. Uh, I don't know if I wasn't home when they dropped it off or they didn't ring the doorbell or what. Now some of you have uh, warned me a few times because I've exposed my address. True, um, but it leads to things like this. <laughs> In fact we have two um, what I presume are fan submitted boxes. I still don't know who dropped this off. Uh, I was a little wary of opening it, so I already did before I recorded the video. Maybe I should have done it live, I don't know. But what it is is simply uh, some Sam's photo facts. And uh, there was a note inside, uh, if I find it I'll show it, uh, saying, oh, I hope you can make use of these. And I wanted to show it because, yes, absolutely. I quickly looked through it and some of the sets I plan on working on in the future are covered in here. For example, this. It's one of the first sets I got, actually. It's been in storage a long time. I restored a Sentinel with a similar chassis, but this is the airline version, so absolutely that guy. And this is the Sam's Photo Effect for the Philco 48-1000 that I showed, and that's one of the sets on my new display shelf. They show a 1001 on the cover, but the chassis is identical to the Model 1000. This, this is the Craftsman chassis I picked up this spring at, uh, on the way to the uh, early television swap meet. That's where it's just the nice, uh, beautiful chrome-plated chassis with an eye tube for custom installations. Uh, and I, one of, there are several photo effects for Spartans. I have a really, really pretty tabletop Spartan. I'm sure it matches one of these. They list a number of models here. My cabinet looks a little bit different, but the knobs and the screen and all that look the same. Uh, I also have uh, the airline version of this guy. It's a tabletop portal set, kind of unusual. So, And it goes on and on and on. Uh, this covers a lot of sets from 1950. Some rather obscure sets in here too. Coronado, uh, Techmaster, Teleking. So you see a number of companies sold bare chassis for custom installations, custom cabinets, Transvision. So it wasn't just uh, the Radio Craftsman, Ambassador. I presume these were made by somebody else and they were rebranded. Apex. I think I might have shown this in a photo a while ago in my community tab on my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, uh, just about every day I post a cool vintage photo of TV or some interesting photo from my collection or one that I find online. So be sure to check out the community tab on my YouTube channel on a regular basis if you like seeing interesting photos. And I think in one of them I showed an Apex or something similar where it was kind of a generic looking TV where it had a sort of a crude, it might have been a Spiegel, a crude uh, brand name on it. See, these companies didn't make them, they bought them from companies that, uh, I was going to say rebranded, but it wasn't like they were made by RCA or something. There were, there were companies like uh, Gamble, Scogmo, uh, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember the names of the companies because they didn't sell their own products. They just sold them to department stores, chains drugstores, whatnot, Firestone, and they would put their name on it and sell it. Uh, so that's why you end up with some of these really obscure brands that uh, are probably quite hard or rare, if not impossible to find. But I don't know if they have really any intrinsic value, just a historical oddity, I think. So whoever the mystery donor of this was, thank you very much. I can absolutely make use of some of these. Now that same vein, 
Now this box I did know I was getting because he asked me for my address and an email. My email address, by the way, is bandersontv at gmail.com if you want to inquire about something. So, uh, he also included a note that he hopes I can make use of some of these parts in my projects. And yes, absolutely I can. Because the main thing in here are these, which are controls. Replacement period vintage controls. These are gold, my friends. Um, when controls go bad, replacing them, modern equivalents basically don't exist. Uh, things have become very standardized with controls, and they tend to not have the same dimensions, certainly not the same look and feel of vintage controls, which typically had solid brass shafts, and were very sturdy and could handle higher wattages, but also they were typically or often dual controls or two controls with a power switch on the back. Cobbling together something with modern parts to replicate that is uh, not so easy sometimes. So let's see what's in here. Yeah, it's, it's just cool how they would package these. So these are uh, IRC made these and these were made for replacement purposes. So they engineered the control shafts to accommodate a variety of needs. So it's knurled, it's half moon, and it's slotted. So it's sort of a, and it's a very long shaft, so the idea was you would cut it down to shape and it could accommodate a variety of knob types. So this is a little bit newer. Some of these are a bit crustier, I'd say, like uh, the central lab. So, if it wasn't for donations like this, my resource, well, Playthings of the Past, I believe, is uh, is gone. Um, somebody took over the inventory, and I think they've been trying to get it back online. That was a, a gentleman who had a warehouse full of vintage parts like this. Uh, but there, he uh, retired a while ago. Uh, but yeah, here's a more vintage type control. 200 ohm. Uh, half a watt. So, <laughs> if you've been following that Dumont series I'm working on, which I'll be getting back to very soon, it has a lot of bad parts. So, this is very much a very topical thing for me because I've been scouring the internet looking for replacement controls and coils and whatnot. So, getting things like this is definitely a treat. We've got some coils, we have some power resistors, some type of adapter, extension, cable. With the old timey six pin connector on it. Good old workman fuse. Workman made a lot of uh, replacement parts. And here's an IRC. It's just an AC switch. So if you take an IRC control of the same product line and uh, you need to add a power switch, you could tack something like this on the back. And it would have a mechanism that would engage the switch. So if you're building up a control to try to replace something you're missing, it's really awesome to have parts like this. What's also cool is how thoughtful they were. So it's not just a control. There's documentation inside. And they show you how you might use it and how you can combine it with other controls. And all kinds of wonderful info that you would never get in something today. It shows you exactly how to... Disassemble potentiometer, add this on to it. Shows you what types. So, very neat to have stuff like this. The alternative, or an alternative, is to scavenge them out of something else. But, uh, what, a, what a nice treat when you've got new old stock parts. So, so on and so forth. And more controls. We have a single plate to line or voice call transformer. So primary 15 to 20K and secondary 3.5 ohms, 5 watts. It's an output transformer for a speaker. Great thing to have. What are these? Two 
two pilot for seven prongs relux. What the heck is that? I'm sure some of you guys know. I'm thinking it's got to be related to something I don't work on. And since there's relux and there's a tape thing, I'm thinking it's something for a reel to reel. Oh. On the back, it looks like a retractable test lead with an, there's an alligator clip on the end. Wow. I bet one of you guys knows what this is. That's a, <laughs> that's a head scratcher to me. Alright, what else do we have? A bunch of... I was going to say used, but no, these are new old stock. They're just not in the original boxes. But yeah, man, try to find something like this that it's made today. You can, if you look long and hard, but uh, it can be very expensive. And actually, carbon 15, I wonder if this is a 15 meg pot. So this is on my mind because that projection set I got recently says it has problems with the focus circuit. And he has to control at one extreme and the focus circuit on that like a number of early sets. It's electrostatic focus, but high voltage. And instead of using a second separate rectifier or whatever, there's a voltage divider string off the 30,000 volt supply with the potentiometer in the middle of it. So find a 15 meg pot that can handle a few thousand volts across it. <laughs> Good luck. So maybe I'll be using that. Who knows? Who knows? So, and so on and so forth. Oh, these are great to get too. The actual IRC distributor catalog. Wonderful because it has part numbers. So if you know you need a one meg pot that's a certain style, there's a part number. You can search for it on eBay or whatnot. Or post a wanted to buy. And there they show you different shaft types and different tapers and stuff. So yeah, this this is this is wonderful to have. 4.5 megacycle ratio detector coil. So, if you recall, I have an Emerson 571 that I'd like to restore that has some really ugly repairs, one of which is they completely annihilated and removed the 4.5 megahertz ratio detector transformer and put in some modern diodes and rigged something up. I'd like to get it back more to stock. That's the kind of part I need to do it. So, Fantastic, thank you very much. All right, so this little guy, this was a total impulse purchase. Where did I get this? I guess it was off of eBay. I think it was direct from China. I was, I think maybe less than five bucks. But this is something I get asked about all the time, so I figured what the heck. I'll take the plunge and buy one and see if it actually is worth the money. Uh, it's an HDMI converter which I believe, well, let's just open it up. <laughs> I think it will go from HDMI to composite. Yes. So, HDMI input from your streaming device, so you get a Roku, or your computer, or a Google Chromecast, or an Amazon Fire Stick, you plug it into that. On the other side, we have the good old yellow, white, and red. So your composite video, left and right audio. There's a switch on the side for NTSC or PAL, and you supply your own power. But they do give you a little cable. Now, like I said, this was maybe five bucks or something like that. Uh, it was probably just one chip inside, maybe a couple discrete parts. It's cheap. And here's our extensive manual here. Uh, it says it'll do 480i, so you can play on TV, VHS, VCR, DVD recorders, NTSC PAL. Let's find out. I bought one a while ago from Japan. It was more like 50 bucks, but I see this topic all the time. So I want to launch into an extensive series on a number of topics, but all related to getting watching programming on a vintage TV, be it uh, an over-the-air converter box, which is what I typically demonstrate, 
or converting digital to analog and then modulating it. You can't plug this right into a vintage TV. You need some more stuff after it. And then transmitting through the air. So this is just another little th piece of that. We're almost there. Now I gotta remove all the shrink wrap. Finally, jeez. <laughs> it's a rack of modulators. High quality, probably broadcast quality, maybe, or close to it. It's probably for a hotel system. The reason I pounced on it is often I see these in the UHF region. This is VHF, channels 2 through 13, except we're missing 5 for some reason. These are not Agile modulators. You cannot change the channel. These are factory aligned and preset for these channels. They do have an Agile version. They're a little bigger. They're more expensive and you have to program them. I think there's a USB connector on it or something like that. Jukes. Sorry, my dog's eating a roll of paper towels. Um... No, it's in a nice little rack. This is the power supply. We have adjustments on the front for audio, video modulation levels, AV, I'm not sure what that is, and the green power indicator light. They are the VMM600s. The reason I, I, I paid too much for this is because these are completely obsolete. Other than vintage TV enthusiasts, AV enthusiasts, really nobody has any use for these anymore. <laughs> Uh, but what I'm missing is there should be a big old connector. I think it's a 37 pin, yeah, 37 pin connector from this that feeds power into each of these individually. Um, I don't think they go in parallel. I think there's a separate power connection to each of these. Maybe it's all parallel on this, I don't know, but the connector I've seen has a big old 37 pin off that and then a separate connector to each of these. Um, Maybe you could just connect all these in parallel, and uh, but uh, anyways, so I either need to buy a connector for this, and then a whole bunch of little two pin connectors, and wire them all up and figure out the pin out on this thing, or try to scavenge one up from somewhere. But that's the deal, you've got uh, video in via an F connector mono audio via an RCA and then your RF out. Now just about every converter, not just about every every converter I've ever seen is a left and right out and just about every modulator I've seen is mono. So we'll simply be combining the output of the stereo device with a couple 1k resistors or something to combine the left and right channels. Now the RF out Notice we just have one for each of these. So you could just take this, one of these, and go directly into a TV. Or if these have enough output power into a splitter and branch it off into a few TVs. But what if you want to have a separate feed into channel 2, 3, 4, 5? And then just have one connection to your TV and be able to actually use the channel selector. Well, there's another companion piece to this which I'll need to pick up which is a combiner, which is uh, simply a passive device that you can connect all these outputs to and it has one output jack. It's probably just a series of uh, terminating devices, uh, probably some coils and resistors, so you don't get reflection, you don't get yeah, whatever. <laughs> it properly terminates them and combines them and has an output. I'm sure you lose some power in the process. So there really should be a third piece, which is an amplifier. So modulator, combiner, then an amplifier. If you wanted to drive a long cable and feed a whole bunch of sets, you'd need one type. If you want to actually transmit, you might uh, have a somewhat different arrangement. But either way, I will need to pick up a passive combiner. They're inexpensive. They're, they're it's just a one, U, one unit high little rack thing. I'm sure there's not much of anything inside of it. If I'd waited longer, I probably could have got a combo unit where it had the combiner and the power cable and everything I wanted. But like I said, most of these I see, the channels are in the 20s and the 30s and, you know, in the UHF range, in other words. 
it's been a while since I've seen a woman that was VHF and had uh, almost all the channels, so now I'll be on the hunt for channel 5 if I really want to make this complete. So my end goal is to be able to fire up a vintage TV and use the channel selector. You may have seen, wondered, I've got questions like, why are you bothering to see that the channel selector works or aligning other channels? Who cares? Just put it on channel 3 or just hardwire an input. This is why. I'd like to, since I, I'm, I'm, I'm very deep into the hobby at this point, uh, I'd like to be able to show them off now and then. Uh, in a poss possible way with the cleanest signal, so that's why I picked this up. Plus, I thought it might be interesting to you guys. So, between this and all the other stuff I've picked up over the last couple of years, um, I've got a lot of stuff <laughs> to, to play around with. So, we'll be picking up on that in the near future. That's going to be it for now. I hope to find you found this interesting. And if you have any thoughts on some of the stuff I showed in that parts box, please leave a comment.